All right, welcome to The Robert Show. Look who I have with me, Antria, who is the principal advocate at AWS for Gen AI and ML. Uh, super excited to be chatting with you today and such a pleasure to finally meet you. I've seen all the great work that you've done in this space, so many books. Uh, I follow, I've been following you, like I said, almost more than seven to eight years. Wow, uh, thanks I, so much. <laughs> uh, but all the great work that you've done for the community, we always love to, you know, always follow your content and I'm finally so excited to have you on the show. And I'm pretty sure the audience is very much familiar with the work that you've done. Uh, but just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you're working on, Yeah, Anja. of course. And, and thanks so much for having me. Big fan of your show as well. Thank you. Yeah, I work as a principal developer advocate for Generative AI, meaning I get to engage with a lot of developer communities, right? Especially here in the Bay Area, which is exciting. Yeah. And I'm trying to show them what's possible with AI these days. Mm, it's exciting because uh, in the last four years, we've seen so much developments happening every day. Like I know of where we were chatting about every day we get up and there's something new that's happening in this space. How do you kind of keep up? That's like uh, very interesting. But just for audience, I'm also kind of curious to learn a little about, you know, how is generative AI changing the role of the developer? Because for them, uh, there's a lot of information coming their way as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and I have the same experience, right? I wake up in the morning and, and so much happened. So I think it's, it's really also like applying AI to how we learn and, and there's a lot of things changing. So if I look, you know, being a developer myself, I think two things change right now, how we develop and what we develop. Mm. So if I first touch a little bit on, on the how it's changing, probably a lot of you have tried, you know, the new AI assistance in software right. development. So we now have the ability to chat and learn within our IDEs, right? Mm -hmm. At AWS, for example, we have Q Developer that can be installed as a plugin in your IDE. So right there, you develop the code, and it's so much more these days than just code completion. So you can right. have a chat. You can say, hey, I want to build an application, and you describe it in natural language. And then, you know, the assistant helps you to plan through what is needed, how to develop that application. You can see the steps, and then also suggests code which you can review. So mm. it's exciting how we develop and who can be a developer is changing so much right now. Yeah, no, I think those are fantastic insights. So uh, when we talk about obviously AI agents, obviously it's such a huge topic right now. Everyone's kind of, you know, all around uh, trying newer things. Uh, but I'm also curious to know when it comes to, you know, uh, agents uh, or, you know, I would say when the prompting, right? So. How, what are the new skills that matter for developers as prompting or, you know, agent tech systems raise and like rise in the popularity? How does that work? Yeah, I think a lot of us remember that famous tweet from Andre Kapathy last year saying English is becoming the <laughs> hottest new <laughs> programming language. Right. And I think we all witnessed it's, it's really kind of the truth these days. True. So I think what skills the developers need to to get to is kind of not just coding, but more so how do I describe what I want to build, right, in this example. Mm. So prompt engineering, like how do you phrase your prompts? How do you describe what you want to build? Is, is becoming so important, almost like, you know, as important as, as knowing how to write good code. Exactly. But as you can imagine, if I provide a very vague and general input, the response might be very generic too. So True. we have to learn, I think, also a little bit how to work with those AI tools, be concise, and mm. then really to get the output that, that we wanna get. Yeah, that's very right. Actually, I was talking to a few enterprise leaders out there as well, and they had like a similar thought uh, around you know the prompting as well, where we do the prompting, but it, when it's very much specific to something that we are kind of looking at, uh, you need to be very concise about it, and then you get, extraordinary results as well. You can yeah. you just need to understand uh, what you need to be asking and what type of results you're expecting as compared to, you know, just getting a generic answer out there. Right. And you just talked about the agents, right? right. Agentic workflows. It's it's kind of the the hottest topic right now I think in exactly. the industry. And if you think about it, agents you also want to be very specific. Right, there's a lot of discussion like what should the agents do and you're giving capabilities, you know, to integrate right. API calls into your applications using the uh, the language models, for example, to help with the reasoning and then the agentic workflow helps to take actions, call APIs. Mm. And there's also this similar pattern 
have a very specific agent and you can combine agents to do you know more things but don't just give an agent like you know access to a hundred apis and and hope that it's going to figure it out right like be specific it's it's kind of the True. same pattern that applies there yeah no 100 percent, i agree and also kind of curious to learn a little about you know when we talk about generative ai about agent tech as well how do you see you know the developers upskilling in this space what's like the the point because that's one question i kind of also get from developers that oh we're just starting our journey and now gen ai is like a big thing we want to you know get into it and obviously uh, upskill ourselves so where do you think they should be starting and um, what what should they keep in mind when they're get kind of you know obviously getting into this space yeah i think definitely be fearless and be curious right i think the change is here, and it's kind of one of those big pivotal moments in, in software development. So I just want to encourage everyone to, to just be fearless and try it out, right? And mm. the technology might not be perfect in every area, but there's so much that it's already like really, really good at. So start experimenting, start to get hands on. And I'm also very privileged and honored to have the ability to work with Dr. Andring, for example, and the yes. team at DeepLearning.ai. So personally, um, I worked with a team and we put together some courses, right? So there's a ton of like online courses available that get you started. If you want to learn a little bit more about the basics of why are the models behaving and, mm. and how does agents really work. But the nice thing is you don't have to be a PhD in data science anymore, right? So um, you can start just, you know, looking at some maybe intro courses and then mm. really get, get hands on, like grab an example you find and then start exploring start installing those tools in your IDE and just, you know, get familiar with it. Yes, we love it. And I've kind of, you know, obviously seen your, you and Andrew Engie kind of comes up with so many courses out there which are uh, introductory courses, beginner level courses, and that could help uh, the developers to upskill themselves out there. So that's fantastic. I'm also curious, uh, since you work in AWS, uh, you know, there are so many resources that you all have in this in in this area as well, in Gen AI, in AI ML. Uh, do, you all, do you have anything that you would like to suggest to the developers out there or those who are kind of curious to start uh, their, you know, their, their career around Gen AI? Yeah, yeah. So I'm part of the developer experience team. Yes. And so our team, we get to do a lot of like content and helping developers, you know, to get started. And one thing I want to call out, if you're based here in the Bay Area, mm. we opened the AWS loft in San Francisco on Market Street and kind of transformed it into the generative AI hub for developers. Nice. So wow. every week, almost every day, we're running events there. That is like meetups, hands-on workshops. So if you're curious and in the area, feel free to, to pop by there. So nice. we do have a lot of events where you get the chance to really try it out in a safe space and, and we have meetup groups coming in. Nice, and so it's a good, good way to network with people as well absolutely. and learn at the same time. Absolutely, learn together, right? right. <laughs> come bring your friends, come there yeah. and, and just explore the technology. And then also if you're not based here, A, we're running the, this event and the loft across uh, various cities around the world, which is exciting, but also for a lot of like, you know, folks that want to consume online content. Right. So we have a ton of stuff available, whether it's in our YouTube channels, if you want to check it out, AWS developers, and also a community space on community.aws where we're blogging and sharing. And it's really the community coming together and sharing their experiences too. So it's a nice. kind of a peer learning experience, which is really exciting. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I'll also make sure I'm sharing all these links with our audience out there. Uh, one more quick question for you. I know AWS reInvent is just around the corner. Like, one it month is. is right. We all are excited about it. Um, uh, are you going to be there? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so interested to know what can we expect this year. I know it's too early and you wouldn't want to, obviously, we would want to keep a few things secret for AWS, but what can we expect and uh, where can people meet you when they're there? Yeah, um, so you definitely want to check out all of the exciting sessions, but a lot of value really comes from again like networking, networking. meeting peers True. and you know exploring and, and sharing experiences so um there is a huge expo area as always and we're going to have a developer launch there oh, so nice. feel free um and make sure to check that one out we have again community members coming in giving talks and really kind of providing a hub there to come and just you know meet people 
and have a good time. I agree. Last year we were there, there were almost 65,000 plus people uh, and we've had a blast. Like four days just passed by, we've met so many interesting personalities in this space, uh, such good sessions as well and you'll always create magic when it comes to reinvent. So looking forward to that. And uh, and yeah, one last question for our audience, if people want to reach out to you, learn about your books. Are you working on something uh, again? Uh, I know you always work on books. <laughs> Aren't we always working on something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, anything that you would like to share with the audience and if they want to reach out to you, where can they do it? Yeah, that? absolutely. So if you want to follow me, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Um, that's usually where I share a lot of the stuff I'm working on, um, the events I'm popping in. Right. So you're going to see a lot of um, activities going on there. And yeah, connect. And I'm pretty sure um, the next things will be announced there. This is uh, great. I can't wait. And uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for chatting on The Robert Show. It's such a pleasure. I'm pretty sure we'll meet at AWS reInvent and we'll keep the conversation going. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.